Good evening and welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master for the Dungeon Dudes 5th Edition live stream campaign. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe Gorman playing Wrath, the Asimar Warlock. Thank you for joining us once again tonight. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos uh, every other Tuesday and every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. You can check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. And we also have them available on podcasts. So you can check them out on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or Spotify. And we are very excited because... Yesterday, if you haven't heard already, we launched Dungeons of Drakenheim on Kickstarter. <laughs> Working with our very good friends at Ghostfire Games, we have brought season one of our live stream campaign uh, to life as a fifth edition module that you can run for your very own with your game, gaming group. It is currently live on Kickstarter. You can head to drakenheim.com and that'll take you right to the Kickstarter page. Uh, and I just want to say a massive thank you to this incredible community. We funded the campaign in five minutes and in within a single day, we have reached over. Um, well, let, let's just see what, what are our numbers here. Over 4,000 backers uh, pledging almost $450,000. We have some amazing people in this community and just the outpouring of gratitude and support has totally overwhelmed and floored me thank you so much we're so ex i'm so excited to share this world with you all in a way like never before kelly what do you think uh yeah it's uh monty and i definitely had our minds blown i think a thousand times yesterday every time that we thought we knew what we were getting into it just exceeded <laughs> all expectations we didn't even have our stretch goal graphics ready people were like throwing money at the screen and we had to we had to catch up so i i'm just so thankful for that and so excited uh that people are excited to to delve into the ruins of drakenheim for themselves and witness the terror and horror and frustration of the choices that you're gonna have to make and probably die a few times <laughs> and deal with deal with all of that awfulness and uh maybe maybe uh save the world who knows we're so excited. Uh, the Obviously, if you've watched our show and you've watched season one and you've watched us play, you know just how awesome this world can be. And we're so thrilled that you'll be able to experience it for yourself at your game table. We have been able to blow through so many stretch goals to add more content to this book. So beyond the the beyond the core of the original Drakenheim campaign, which is a non-linear campaign, you can choose a different outcome for yourself and decide the fate of Drakenheim for your very self. We have been able to add in stuff that I'm so excited about. We get to add an appendix detailing the world of Drakenheim. Uh, so the, if you're if you're ever wondered about just what are the terms of the Edicts of Lumen. Or what is the capital of Caspia? Or where do the Silver Order have their headquarters in the distant lands of Illyria? Or what are some of the other places, races, peoples, and folks that dwell in the lands surrounding Westamar? This section has been added to the book. We made this stretch goal. We are adding a new introductory adventure, the road to Drakenheim, new character backgrounds. We're going to have a random encounter card deck. Um, we've added, if you watched our game with Matt Ruff, where we went to the Chapel of St. Brenna, that's now in the book. Um, Kelly's amazing adventure that he ran in our Untold Tales, The Plight of the Pale Man, that's in the book. That's the latest stretch goal that we just uh, broke through. Um, and we are now working on our next stretch goal at $500,000, where we will add add more delirium forged weapons into this book new magic items with the uh, built with the power of delirium shards that your players can wield um 
for some of them are very powerful very volatile um and i'm sure your players are gonna love them <laughs> so with, with that um i think they'll uh i'm ready to celebrate this by playing some D. &D. how about you all oh, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. All right. let's return to the shadows Drakenheim is no more for 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that first place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath, they had ventured to the village of Kesselholm, where they are investigating the strange goings-on of terrible monsters in the wilderness, headless horsemen riding by night, and a cache of delirium hidden somewhere nearby the village. Following the trail of strange happenings, our players sought out the burgomaster of Kesselholm uh, village, one Leah Fassbender, who has been in, inflict, afflicted with a strange sickness and stricken by nightmares of a creature that visits her every few nights. Our heroes have resolved to see just what happens when the Leah Fassbender has one of her night terrors and have thus broken in to the Burgermaster's manor house in the middle of the night. It is a dark and stormy night. And it is indeed a dark and stormy night for just as a pre frame of reference. Uh, we are currently having a dark, dark and stormy night here in Toronto. So uh, just a fair warning to all of you watching this live. Uh, if the power does go out on us, apologies in advance. <laughs> um, but to get back to this, let's look at our map. You are in the second level of the Fastbender Manor House. Um, the group of the group of you have split your positions. Um, Madam Fastbender's butler is asleep um, in uh, in the area in in his chambers over here, and Leah Fastbender herself is in her chamber, where she she has actually been her bed her her, her kind of canvas bed has railings around it and straps that are keeping her in because apparently she's fallen out of bed several times our tr trusty familiars are hiding in a nearby closet rudy hiding in a nearby guest bedroom wrath in a walk-in closet and wilhelm himself has been secretly placed inside madame fassbender's um uh, room behind her dressing shade uh, and in the bag of hole in a bag of holding where he is poking his head out now as the clock strikes 12 a black coach rides up through the night pulled by horses uh, with hides of midnight coal um, a lone figure swaddled in heavy cloaks steps out of the coach um wrath from your your position you can only dimly see in the uh in the flashes of the thunder above uh the um the coach the coachman who sits idly as the rider uh, inside the coach steps out and walks toward up walks along the uh estate grounds towards the front doors of the manor house and knocks rap 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 upon the heavy knocker you hear it resound through as there is a crack of thunder in the air and you hear the stirring of madame fassbender's butler in his chambers 
what do you do? And there's a there's a stagecoach outside. Yes, yes. That is pulled. There's up. a stagecoach pulled by four horses. And is this the driver? The the driver or- is still sitting in the driver's seat in the front. It's the, this fine coach, uh, um, this fine black black wooden coach um, that has a covered kind of carriage and big spoked wheels and four horses pulling it. And the uh, the driver is still sitting in 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 his seat. Um, he, you he, if you watched carefully, Wrath, you actually would have noticed that the driver got out, got out of the um, the driver's seat, opened the door for whoever was riding within and then went back to his post as whoever was inside walked across the estate. Their figure that perhaps, perhaps, perhaps a of, of average human height, but of um, a rather broad build, uh, swaddled head to toe in cloaks. I'm going to. I I I kind of lean up against the wall in the closet clumsily, and and then mm-hmm. I, I I sort of take over the vision of of Bruce, and I keep a, a a distant watch on the door and of of the butler, and mm-hmm. as soon as he re- leaves his room to go downstairs, I'm gonna have I'm gonna follow him. Okay, because I've heard stirrings. Certainly. Wilhelm, Rudy, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm staying put because I feel like our mission is to see what's happening to the the Burgermaster. So I feel like I'm in the prime spot to observe any going ons. So I'm I'm staying put right where I am. I, I pull my hood up. So now I'm poking this far out of the bag of holding, occasionally poking up for a little breath of air. And then I have my hood and the flap of the bag over top so all that you can see are my eyes peering out from this bag uh behind what eye single one eye eye, single eye um (laughs) one single eye peering out from the darkness of the bag of holding peering through the cracks of this folding uh what do you call these the folding thingy uh it's a screen it's called a screen oh wow it's just it's just just called a yeah, I, 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 I know. Uh, <laughs> this so-called uh, yeah. screen. Yes. Learning if, new if, words. If you want to be fancy, it's a dressing screen. But yes, it's just uh, yes. a screen. Yeah. Peering out yes. through the cracks of the dressing screen. Mm-hmm. And and for those of you that want to know some of your etymology, of course, these things were the reason why we call the screens that we have today screens because is because these things were very useful for projecting images onto back before you you know when you had to wind up the projector. So screen became screen became screen became screen screen. The more um, you know, knowledge is power. <laughs> um. So with uh with that, so Bruce is going to follow. Um, Bruce is going to follow the butler down. Is that silently? Correct? Yeah, and he's gonna he. I, I want him to almost like perch at the top of the stairs and like look down from the landing uh, towards the front door as the butler is approaching it to to kind of watch and see who um, if if he answers it. Now this is all pending. The butler is actually going to go answer it. Okay, very well. You watch. Um, I am going to have you roll a stealth check for Bruce. Bruce is a stealthy boy. (laughs) Six. Okay. (laughs) Bruce. Bruce. All right. (laughs) He gets distracted on the way by a painting. Okay. As the butler exits his room,
The butler exits his room um, and begins to turn down the... He walks forward this way and begins to turn down this way to go down the, 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 the stairs there. That's about the moment when Bruce steps out, mm -hmm. okay, to follow. And just as Bruce steps out, the butler stops um, and, gr like, pads his, his, his um, uh, shirt, or, like, pads at his shirt. He's like, where's my key? And he turns around and sees Bruce. <laughs> as if he's turning around to, uh, um, to get returned to his room. And he sees the Bruce and he's like, and then, what are you doing in here? Meow. Um, and, uh, I will have you, uh, roll initiative for Bruce. Uh, that's a, uh, seven. Okay. The, the butler stops for a moment and he turns. He says, you shouldn't be in here. Mangy animal. And he rushes forward towards Bruce. Um, and, uh, goes to grab him, uh, and, and pick the cat up. <laughs> Can Bruce dodge out of the way? Uh, he's going to attack to grab. Okay. His uh, AC is 12. Uh, he gets an 18 to hit. <laughs> he grabs um, the cat. <laughs> and he grabs and scoops, scoops the cat up and kind of holds Bruce by the scruff of the Meow! neck and looks, and, and he, he, Bruce had come in the house before, correct? Yeah. Would the butler have seen? Yeah. It's like, where did you come from? Did Ow. you get lost? Did you get lost, mangy cat? <sighs> Roll a d6. Okay, Bruce, this is your time to shine. Six. I remember when we used to have cats. No matter, I'll put you out for the night. And the knock sounds again. The man carries Bruce. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give Bruce a turn here. He, he takes Bruce, holding him in his hands over towards this staircase. What is Bruce gonna do? So, so Bruce is sort of not Bruce at this point because it's kind of like me. Yeah. And I'm doing like I'm being very complacent. Bruce would not uphold to being held or grabbed um, by any manner of creature, let alone a, 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 a human man um, or, or for what he uh, so assumes. But um, as I've taken sort of control of Bruce temporarily, mm -hmm. I'm very complacent. I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. OK, well, with that. He is going to, um, I'm going to just make sure I got both these guys. So I'm going to move us down to the main floor here. He takes Bruce down the stairs. Okay. Uh, ba down this back set of stairs and he goes to the back door. And as he goes to open the back door, he looks and he says, did I forget to lock the door? And then I scratch him. Okay, make I, an attack. I, 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 I get a... Uh, uh, so Bruce takes a swing at him and... Um, Technically, your familiar can't attack, but I'm going to allow... I'm going to allow Bruce to try to escape the grasp. The, the grab. Okay, uh, he gets a... Uh, if we did say... Um, Eight. He gets an eight. <laughs> this dice is failing. <laughs> Bruce swings at him and the, just imagine the cat like just batting and he and with with actually like, a, a quick reaction, he pulls the cat away and he throws Bruce out the back door and slams the door shut. <laughs> and you hear the sound. So now I'm outside. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> And playing the part of the cat, I, I'm going to have Bruce kind of wander off and okay. it, it, around the house, but then disappear okay. into the pocket dimension. And I'm going to return to my form. 
the 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 knock sounds once once more, and the butler, uh, you, you you can just hear the steps of the butler rushing towards the door, um, and those of you up above can hear the creaking noise of the door opening. And as Bruce scampers off into the night, you uh, you hear. Um, because Wilhelm and Rath, you're you're still so Rath, you would hear this. You hear a low, sultry voice say, "Did something keep you?" And the the butler replies, "No, your grace, just a pest." And the sultry voice responds, "Hmm. May I come in?" And the butler responds almost automatically. Yes, your grace, you may come in. And none of you can see this. Um, so you just hear the door close with a, with a low click. What will you do? I'm staying put. Um, I want. Is the door to the closet open? Is the door to the closet open? Uh, just slightly, because Bruce would have, um, Bruce would have, um, gone out through it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get Houdini. Is is this? <laughs> is this a a it's a suit of armor. A suit of armor. Okay. Oh. Can I get Houdini to hide inside sure. the suit uh, of armor? Houdini can flutters inside the suit of armor. And then I'm I'm under the bed right now, <laughs> and I want to take over Houdini's like vision. So I'm okay. watching through Houdini's eyes. <laughs> okay. You watch through Houdini's eyes as a rolling bank of thin glittering mist with just the slightest red hue wafts its way up the stairs in defiance of gravity creeping along the ground and billowing and sweeping up and up the set of stairs and flowing into the hallway as the clouds billow outwards. It is in this moment that you hear, quite suddenly, the screeching of bats in the roof above. This chittering, squawking, cheep, 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 of the bats in the rooftop above, scratching and fluttering about as the mist slowly proceeds through the upper foyer and towards the bedchamber of Lee Fassbender. What will you do? I'm going to stay where I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wrath? Hmm. I, I send I'm in this closet and have have I heard him enter her chambers because the door was closed right you have not heard anything you you just I heard him enter the room the house you, and then that's it yeah you have not heard anything it's been silent since since the door closed until you heard this chittering of bats in the roof above. Uh, I'm going to... Again, Bruce, don't fail me a second time, send Bruce out to uh, investigate the uh, hallway. Okay. Bruce Quietly. heads out through the... So there's... Notice how there's a small hall here? Mm -hmm. And then there's the doorway seeping out. Okay. As Bruce pokes his nose through the doorway, give me a stealth check. 
<laughs> Come on. Can I get above 10? Come on, man. Nine. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> So sorry. Okay. As the cat pokes its nose through the door, there is a creak, and Bruce sees just for a moment the billowing mist slip under the doorway into Leah Fassbender's chamber. And as it does so, um, the the butler comes to the top, the, the top of the stairs and notices the movement on the door and begins moving towards it. I... I want to do something. Okay. I send Bruce at the door and I want to use the fine familiar. Um, I want to cast a spell with the range of touch on the door. Okay. And I want to cast light. Okay. On the door. On the door. Okay. A brilliant, uh, as, as you do so, the light uh, on on which on the inside of the door? And if I do it to the door, would it shed from both sides? Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll allow that if that's what you want. You want the whole door to just start glowing with light? Yes. Okay. As a signal. <laughs> okay. The light uh, shines out. Wilhelm, you see the light under the doorway as this billowing mist moves into the room. I'm going to have everyone roll for initiative now. Sorry, I wasn't so stealthy. Um, All good. I rolled a 13. Got a 27. I got an 8. I haven't rolled above Joe, a 7 new tonight. Dice. I haven't new rolled dice. above a 7. I just keep switching dice. <laughs> well, let's the stop switching working. dice. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Wil Wilhelm, what do you got? Uh, 27. Wow. Yeah. Wrath? Eight. Okay. I got Rudy? 13. 13. Okay. I'm going to have uh, Wrath casting light be the trigger for initiative. Um, so this is what we will we will work out here. So, Wilhelm, that is the cloud of mist. That's kind of the center of its mass there as it's coming into the room. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it It is entered inside the room um, fully just as Wrath has cast the light spell. Um, and so you see the crack under the door illuminate, but you d don't know what else is going on outside. As you see this mist seep underneath the door, and form up and it begins forming almost a column lurching over top of the sleeping Leah Fassbender who begins to rustle softly in her bed. What will you do? I would like, uh, this is, this is a classic in a classic Wilhelm mistake fashion, which will probably end up bad for me. I leap from the bag and burst out to confront the mist column, drawing my moon-touched rapier, which, which glows with moonlight. Now, okay. um, a scientific fact is that moonlight is actually just sunlight reflected off of the moon. So uh, do with that what you will. Um, so I draw my moon-touched rapier. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. I was um, trying with the light. I was trying with the light. I know. I, I know. I see we're exactly we're doing going. what we can. Um, and I I hold up the moon touched rapier and I point it at the uh, smoke and I say, "Back, you foul beast! You shall not feast tonight." Okay. What do you do? 
Uh, Anything else you want to do? I'm going to attempt to stab the mist. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I got a 15. Um, as you stab at the mist, your weapon finds no purchase. I yell, aha! And then I pull the blade back, and I um, hope that my loud battle cry uh, kind of alerted my friends that uh, things were going down. And then I back up and leap over this couch here and stand upon it with my rapier out pointed at the mist, uh, hoping to intimidate it with my presence, but feeling a little discouraged. Okay. The cloud of mist begins to swirl and reverberate. It almost thrums hypnotically um, as it gently floats towards you, Wilhelm. And no, it's, no, no, uh, no. And, and, it, and you hear a voice emanate from it softly saying, no worry. Everything is fine. I'm just here to see my good friend. Sit down. Wilhelm, make a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, it seems about right. I got a six. Okay. Um, that sounds completely reasonable. <laughs> I, 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 I put my sword down at my side and I nod and I'm just like, so nice of you to stop by. And then I sit on the couch and <laughs> relax. <sighs> I wish friends uh, came to visit me. <laughs> um, and, it, and seeing you sit down, it begins to swirl about the, the bed um, a, a, um, a, as it does so. Um, the butler tears the door open, sees Bruce there, and says, You again! And brings back his hand uh, to swat the cat. <gasps> Getting a natural one. <laughs> um, but then it brings its, uh, his other hand back to swat again getting a critical hit. Oh, Bruce. and he, he takes the cat by the scruff of the neck and dashes the cat against the wall. Oh. And there's like this wet snapping noise. What was now, now, and then Bruce does he poofs. like disappear? Like, does he just yeah. poof into like yeah. nothing? Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the butler, the butler sees that. so. Uh, Bruce is destroyed. Bruce! I'm just Bruce. chilling. Um, and the uh, the butler then rushes over towards the doorway and produces a key and places it in the keyhole and locks the door. Oh. Now you have to beat up a butler. <laughs> um, with that, Rudy, it is your turn. Okay. Um, so, is it this door that's locked now? Uh, no, that door is not locked. It is actually the door to the, the to the <laughs> to the uh, Leah's bedroom that is locked. The important one, uh, ah, Kelly. The, the, right. That one. Good. Yep. yep. And he has the key, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I'm gonna get out from under this bed. Open this door, come out, see this butler. Do I do I see that the door is locked or that he's locked it? Uh, yes, you see that he, he, he um, you just see him put pulling the key back out as you burst through the door. And he has a very shocked expression. And as you look into his eyes, you can see they're glowing with a red light now. Mm. Um, I want to wrestle the key out of his hand. Okay. With no explanation. Uh, I'm just like, key? It's mine. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a uh, make an attack roll. 
Um, and uh, then we'll, we will roll an opposed uh, check if you hit. And that's without my proficiency, I'm assuming. Right? No, with your proficiency. Oh, yeah. with, okay. Yep. 20. Okay, uh, I actually get a 21. Oh! <laughs> so you reach for his wrist and he rips his hand out of your grasp with unholy strength. All right. Um, and I get two attacks, I guess. Can I try again? Uh, we'll count that as one of your two attacks. So yeah, you could try that one more time. All right. Um, and I don't know if this <laughs> I could do this with with one attack, but I want to I want to lunge at him and essentially like tackle him to try to get the key. Yeah, yeah, sure. Give me an athletics. We'll make a post athletics checks. Thirteen. Uh, I get a six. So yeah, <laughs> uh, he you've got him grabbed now, right? As you All right. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to need so one I'm, more success for you to get the key out of his hand, though. Uh, like another attack? Uh, it, um, you'll need to make it one more grab action. Like, now that you've got him grabbed, like you pinned yeah. him down, I'm going to need one more successful check for you to pull that out, but you're going to have to use your next action for that. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. And then... Um... Uh... Yeah, that that that'll be it for now. Okay, Wrath, it's your turn. I burst into the room, um, and I try to help wrestle. Like I just sort of take a moment to see what's happening, and I just try to follow Rudy's. Uh, okay, so you're gonna help Rudy give her yeah. give her advantage. Okay. Yeah. With that, we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm, uh, who. Um, you can still act, but you're. But that was a pretty reasonable suggestion. So sitting and just waiting and watching is sounds pretty okay. You know what though? Um, I mean, friend of hers, friend of mine, right? So I'm sitting on the couch, facing away from this all, and I kind of look half over my shoulder and just I'm kind of like, so come here often. Oh, she's one of my dearest friends. The 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 voice responds as it as the mist spin and the creature uh, and the the mist forms into the a monstrous and deformed bat i turn and look at the bat and i smile politely and i go man it's it's so nice that you come and visit your friends like this on stormy nights and just pay them visits. She hasn't been doing well, you know, and it's just really nice that you're checking in on her. And then I turn away from the horrific bat, sit back on the couch and look pleasantly at the wall and just have a smile on my face. She, the, the bat says, good, good. Just be patient now. Um, it is, uh, um, why can't I grab that? Oh, that's. Hmm, why can't I grab that now? Uh, so the miss isn't there, but for some reason I can't click the token. <laughs> uh, and as you say that, the monstrous form of the bat, almost vaguely humanoid in shape, begins to hunch over Leah, who awakens with a start. And she she begins screaming at the top of her lungs as the the voice emanates out. Shh, 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 shh. Don't fight it. It will all be over soon. It's okay, Leah. Your friend's here. Um, and with that, we uh, we go to the um, uh, to the butler. The butler. His eyes glow with a deep red, and he opens his mouth, revealing a fanged maw. His fingernails extend into claws, Rudy, and as you grab, grapple and wrestle with him, his, he digs his fingers into your body, 
getting a um getting a 24 to hit oh, yep um okay um he grabs hold of you taking control of the grab and as he does he pulls you close and goes right for your neck with his mouth to bite you uh getting a 25 to hit uh, yep uh you take six piercing damage um and eight necrotic damage and your hit point maximum is reduced as he bites deeply in, into your and in, you feel the blood getting sucked from your body <laughs> um, so that's is that I guess 68 oh, no 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 With that, the creature spends its legendary action, drawing back its own maw and drinking deeply of Leah Fassbender's blood. You feel it gorge, you, you, Wilhelm, you hear it gorge itself, that gulp, 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 as it drinks hot blood from the back of her neck. You know, rule number 42, sometimes the meaning of life is to just enjoy the moment, I say. Rudy, it is your turn. All right. I am quite disturbed by this butler uh, by my neck. I mean, not on a first date, sir. And I just, as I'm grappling with him, I'm freaked out. So I just start hacking at him. I'm a bit, I'm a bit sad. While I get Houdini to come out of this uh suit of armor over here i'm gonna oh <laughs> thank goodness crit i gotta yeah! crit. <laughs> <laughs> that are not good so good thing we had who did yourself so you just take your axe out and go for it go for it okay uh what's... 15 damage okay um and then um, as my other action, can I then try to grab the key? Um, uh, yes, you can try to take the key again. Okay, and do I have help from Wrath? Uh, yes, you do. And sorry, what am I rolling? Just an attack? Yep. Uh, athletics or acrobatics is good. Oh, okay. Uh, 26. Uh, I get a 10. So you rip the key out of his hand as he bites down on your neck. Like, I just imagine like he's biting on it. You, you take your ax out, slam it into his back and rip the key out of his hand. And I am going to, as my bonus action, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, second wind and gain cool. some of that ouch back. Remember that your hit point maximum has been reduced by eight, so you cannot heal that back. All right, and I get <laughs> eight. I mean, I heal eighteen, but I, I don't nearly need that much. Okay. Um, but I am going to action surge. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, uh, as an action, open up the door. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you can toss the key in the door, uh, and I'll, I'll say that because it is locked, like, you'd need to spend a full action to, to, to do that and push it open. All right, and I, I do that and move inside the door, and I say, Wrath, take care of this butler! <laughs> and I see, make, lock eyes with this vampiric bat drinking blood out of the, uh, Burgermaster. Oh, hey, Rudy. Wilhelm, what you doing? Look at he's doing! Just hanging out with my friends. Okay. The, uh, the... Great. Cool. Uh, with that, um, we go to Wrath. Now, uh, uh Rudy, are you, st are you still holding, um, the, the butler? Uh, Technically, actually, no, actually, Rudy, uh, you wouldn't be able to move into the room because he's got you grabbed. Oh, he has to so, grab you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. Would I be able to open the door then? Uh, I will say that you could wrangle with the action surge. You can kind of wrangle and wrestle around with him and open the door up. Okay. But yeah, he's still got you grabbed. And then I say, Rath, get in there. I got the butler. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so that, <laughs> Rath, it is your turn. <clears throat> I want to try to move past, uh, I want to like step over the wrestling. <laughs> okay, give me an acrobatics check. <laughs> My favorite. Here we go. Do show you show them what you got. Ten. It's a ten. Um, I'm gonna say that um, you can if you want to move, you can end up here, but the butler's gonna get an opportunity attack against you. Um, yes. He crits you. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> was uh, it with the claws or with the, yeah, the fangs? He just reaches out towards you and rakes across your back. Oh. Uh, and, and you take 16 points of slashing damage. Oh! Ow, oh, hey, Rath. Back. Only fair we did it to him. Yeah. Wilhelm! Attack! Yeah. And I'm going to shoot uh, two Eldritch Blasts. Because I, I, now I see this creature hunched yeah. over. Um, drinking, uh, drinking her blood. Uh, I get an 18 to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, for, uh, six damage. Man, I am, I am getting okay. killed here. And then my second shot, like trying to shoot into his back, 24 to hit. Is this against the butler or against the beast? The beast. The beast? Okay, th those are both hits um for uh 13 damage and i okay. want to i want to actually push him off of her so my okay. hope is is that i can actually push him into the wall and and stop the feeding yeah you i'll, I'll say that you can push against the wall and that does break the grab <sighs> and i okay. and i look to wilhelm and i i say into his mind um what are you doing get up we must stop this foul creature. Are you just sitting there? Seriously, Wilhelm, snap out of it. What are you doing? Okay. At the top of the round, there is a crash as swarms of bats come fluttering and flooding down the hallway from the attic above filling the hall and um oh did i do that again no there we go uh fluttering down in into the hallway and fl uh, uh and flying all around so this is their full movement to get down here but they uh th this is where oh, they man. all end up uh hundreds of bats flying down and filling the halls with screeching and uh and, and fluttering no noises um, Wilhelm, as they flutter down, you hear the voice say, the, the, the voice say, tell your friends everything is fine. Tell your friends that they are not welcome in this house. I turn to Wrath and I just go, everything is fine. You're not welcome here. And I look at Wrath and I look back at the creature and I look at Wrath, and I look back at the creature, and then I go, wait a minute. I didn't introduce myself. That's terrible manners. <laughs> <laughs> and I extend out a hand from the couch and go, I am Wilhelm Wolfsbane. Pleasure to meet you. We are not welcome here. <laughs> okay. this point i don't get a save or anything right? something's I'm... fishy mm. <laughs> the the creature blood dripping from its fangs flutters about the the room um and it dissolves back into a mist it didn't shake my hand and slowly 
with, with a seeping flutter begins seeping out the windows. With that, we go to the butler who is going to attack Rudy. Uh, getting a, um, a 17 and a 16 to hit. Nope. Tries to claw at you. Um, and it, uh, it, um, in the meat, in the, as it claws at you, Leah Fassbender screams in agony and terror at what has happened this night. Um, Rudy, uh, it is your turn. Okay. Um, seeing all these bats, um, and I'm still grappled with the, the, butler correct yes you are okay can i drag him into the room <laughs> yeah if we make an opposed uh, check yes you can all yep. right uh... <sighs> 27 uh you win <laughs> yeah you can drag him up to half your speed into the room all right so i drag him in and um just shut the door behind us and Houdini can come in too and I okay. say to the guys uh there's a mighty amount of bats out there uh better watch it and and I'm still so is that like just to know is that one action or one attack that would be uh to to drag him with you uh I'm gonna say that that is one of your attacks uh and your movement and with another attack, can I restrain him? Uh, yeah, you want to fully, like, pin him, basically? Yeah, yeah. we'll make one more pose check. 25. <laughs> okay, yeah, you want to pin to the ground. He hisses and howls. <laughs> and I just turn to the guys and I say, whose idea was it to tie up the butler? <laughs> Mine. <laughs> Next time we time the butler. <laughs> What's that? Oh, hi, Rudy. Rudy, you've been you've been bitten. Yeah, it was not too pleasant. Uh, he got a little close to my locking. You know, it's, think about it when you get close to a little bit of a wild animal, they take a take a bite at you. Same difference. And I <laughs> shake him a little bit into the floor. Hmm. Wilhelm, as uh, as the the man screams and screeches. You you stake to your senses and you hear the sounds of the bats crashing out all the windows and fluttering into the night. Am I aware of what, like, do I remember everything that happened? Yep. Wilhelm, help me, help me uh, pull off her restraints. And I'm going to try to go over and start to uh release uh the woman yeah yeah we're, we're out of initiative order now uh the 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 creature has escaped into the night the bats fluttering off the last crash of thunder and the screeches of the pinned uh butler as as the 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 composed man that you saw earlier is now a creature of feral rage for almost frothing at the mouth with rudy's blood screeching and scratching against you uh, I'm, I start un, untying or undoing the shackles, um, and I look up at Raph, and I'm like, Raph, I'm sorry. Some Don't think about it. It was in my head. And it didn't shake my hand. <laughs> what? We have a monster, not only a monster, but a rude monster. And I'm, I, I, I help. Should not have, we should not have left you alone in here. I... You're right. Okay, don't, do not think about it. Help me, help me untie these, these shackles. She must see what her butler really is. All right. She, um, Leah Fassbender is herself screeching it and sobbing. Um, at, at what has happened. She, she bleeds from her neck um, as, as this occurs. Um, and uh, But um, do, as you go to untie her, um, 
Uh, does does anyone want to try to help, like calm her or assuage her? I'll um I'll I'll like kind of put pressure on her neck and start to like calm her down and just be like, it's okay, we're here to help. Cool, we're- Wilhelm, give me a persuasion check. Nineteen. She 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 calms for a moment. In, in between her sobs, she says, "It wasn't a dream. It was never a dream, was it? That was real." I'm sorry, but yes. Oh, by the flame, by the flame! What's happened? What's happened to him? She points forward to the screeching butler. Ah. <laughs> Well, ma'am, he, he's turned into something. Something that ain't your butler no more. He hisses and howls. <gasps> and I push him down on the floor even more, and I say, Sir, you better <laughs> calm yourself down, or else it's going to mean, we're going to mean business. He Here, and I literally up. push his face into the floor. He, he actually... It tries to snap at your hand to bite your hand with his fangs as you as you do so, uh, only getting a seventeen to hit. Um, but like e- even his, his mouth, like any way that you try to hold him down, his claws are sharp and his bite is like a like a snapping crocodile. He's even restrained. He is like a, like he's like trying to hold down a wild animal. I I I take my rope. And I do like a, you know, like a, tie his hands and his feet together behind his back. Cool. Give me a strength check. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, that, that these restraints are holding for now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you kind of like quickly hog tie him down and he just screeches, maybe grab an apple and shove it in his mouth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what will you do? Well, the creature. The... Sorry. It, it escaped. For now. I've never seen creatures move like that. This is definitely of the old folklore. Blood drinker. It's something. It must have gotten its powers. Um, as they had said. From this Morgan. Morgan? It, yeah. M- Morgan. It. What did it say to you, Wilhelm? Do you remember anything? I... I, I tried to stab it, and it didn't work. And then I backed away from it and suddenly failed to see it for what it was. I felt, I felt like I was looking upon an old friend and they were telling me that everything was going to be okay. And I felt like I just wanted to relax and They just kept telling me that everything was fine, and I believed them. I can't really explain it. I just, I felt like I was in company. I felt like I knew them better than either of you two. I felt like we were the oldest of friends, and that I trusted every word they said. So it somehow got into your mind? It must have. At least we have proven our theories correct. Do not take this failure as the end of the road for this. This is just a step in the right direction. Rule number 17, a failure is a step towards understanding success. Before this night, we weren't sure what exactly we were dealing with. We have at least proven what we are dealing with. I, it may still be some sort of powerful wizard that needs or likes to drink blood. I have trouble 
giving in to the the fantasy, the mythology of this of this creature, but it's harder and harder to dismiss it. Ratha, a meteor crashed into Drakenheim and people started transforming into monsters and you're having a hard time believing that a, a man drinks blood and lives longer and is undead and does all that. That's hard to believe. That's that's science or um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> there's a direct relationship. This is where did this thing come from? This does not look like a delirium creature it does not act like those that we have seen before it is much more like it's much older the one in the elven ruins hmm. something from another place something monstrous now that bat like creature is very different than this gentleman right here i don't know what to make of it Perhaps um, a thrall or a uh, servant to the vampire. Vampires will often keep uh, lesser servants. How do we know how long this butler has worked for for Miss Leah? What is your employment history? Butler. This is at you. Looking at it, you can actually see its wounds have already knitted themselves back together. Uh, I look at my wrist because I don't have a watch there. Um, how long? I, I kind of peer out the window. How long? Do, can I make a guess on how long until sunrise? Um, probably uh, at this time of year, it'll probably be another four hours till sunrise. It's, at, it's well past midnight now, probably closer to 1 a.m. now by the time you've settled everything up. The coach that was out the front is long gone. Mm. We well, might. What, what hurts a vampire? I, I... Um, I know sunlight does. Um, I'm a little foggy on some of the other particulars. That one is one of the more well-known ones. Uh, there's many. Um, actually, I, I reach into my uh, thieves tools and I pull out my mirror and I just kind of look over my shoulder through the mirror at the creature on the ground. Does that work in d and I don't even know, but I'm going to try it. Um, he has no reflection. Huh. Yeah, that's uh, not a good sign. Hmm. Well, at least we know how to tell if people are vampires. Um, I'm going to walk past the tied up creature and head into his chambers, the butler's chambers. Mm -hmm. uh, heading into his chamber, um, the, the, the bed here looks like it has never been slept in. Like it is made perfectly, but there's actually like a thin layer of dust upon it. Um, and something smells off in here. What do you want to do, Wrath? Um, I want to start to look around for that smell. Searching around, you see in the cabinets, there are several rats, squirrels, and other vermin that have been drained of their blood and strung up in here. And are they alive? They're very dead. They're almost shriveled. He would have eaten Bruce. Or tried. He would have tried. Bruce might have eaten him. Well, I, I guess the question is, what, what do we do with them? Well... Unfortunately, I I see only two options. Option one, we kill him. We are okay with that. Uh, option two, we wait until morning when he uh, might turn back. 
and then we question him when he's less vicious mm. and then kill him. It occurs to you now that at no point in your interactions with, with him did he ever leave the house. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean... And I, I turn to him tied up and I say, Sir, you, you, you have a few hours before the sun comes up. I mean, if you're willing to talk and tell us a little bit about what's going on, we might be able to keep you in the house at least tied up for now, but... You know, if we have no other choice, I guess the it'll be meeting the sunrise. What do you say to that? Um, he howls in rage um, at at the merest suggestion. Um, um, and it uh, it it says he he, he says, um. He just howls words like, "Duty, duty to the blood is mine. I fear not the end." I I pull out my rapier again and I I point it at him. And I'm gonna say, the way I see it, we wait until sunlight breaks and we drag you outside and see what that does, or <sighs> or. If that doesn't sound pleasant for you, you tell us everything about your master and you leave this place. It screeches and howls, reaching and uh, uh, reaching towards its bonds and almost tries to break like you can see it. it on its bonds, it's actually tearing into its own flesh to try to break it, break the bonds that hold it. Like it doesn't even care about the pain. the The flesh is tearing away, and bits of blood are are dripping down from it as it tries to like wrestle the rope out of it, bring its mouth clo close to the the ropes to tear them. Like it's not it, like the creature doesn't even feel pain. Um, you know what, um, Miss Miss Leah, can I can I? bring you over to this couch over here instead of the bed. Yes. She's um, like, get, get, get him out of my sight. I can't look at him. Well, Not the... I'll, I'll get you out of here soon. I might have another idea. Uh, Rath, can you help us? Uh, Rudy, what do you think? Should we, we could strap him to the bed. And when sunlight, sunlight breaks, we, we rip open the curtains on these windows, flood the room with sunlight, and there he goes. These restraints on the bed, do they seem sturdier than the rope? Much sturdier. Oh, yeah. I mean, for now, at least that's a, a better way of straining him. Uh, yep. Rath, can we get your help? We might need all I... three of us. It does take the work of all three of you. You can each roll me a d6 as you do. Uh-oh. Uh, How many times does I get Three. Snap? Two. Six. So fortunately, uh, he snaps and bites as you do it, but fortunately, he he never manages to break his bonds enough for any of you, for any of you to be harmed in this process. The three of you working together are able to restrain him down. Uh, Leah um, very carefully limps herself; she's so weak to the to the other bedroom, uh, and is almost immediately falling asleep on the bed on the on the bed. Uh, she's clearly in distress. Um, one of us should try to get anything we can out of this creature before sunlight breaks. Uh, it's going to be a long night, uh, but this might be our only chance for information. Um, and one of us should tend to Leah and make sure that she's okay. So he doesn't seem interested in giving up any information. I don't know how yeah. we're going to convince him to do so. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's like something snapped in this in, in him, and whatever personality he was holding up before is just not there and mm. replaced with some sort of feral creature. You said, I, Wilhelm, that these creatures have servants. He appears to be the servant of that creature. What would make him? I, he just switched though. Like, where? Where's the butler? I want to speak to the butler. Um, Raf, what did you find in the bedroom? Some pests. He seems to use it as a feeding ground. 
he has kept this ruse for quite some time. Yeah. Was, was there any writing in the bedroom? Any any literature? Any any journals? Any notes? Any uh, uh, f- letters from the master to the servant? Any any trail? Any clues? If you would like to check, you may. But I it was a very simple bedroom, not one used by a person. I will investigate, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the room and head to the bedroom. Sure. Heading to the butler's uh, bedchamber again, you see that Wrath left the cabinet where the uh, bodies of all of its prey and victims were were kept. Um, the the only um, thing that uh, Wilhelm, as you examine the chamber, uh, you can roll me a uh, investigation check. Uh, that's going to be a sixteen. Butler has the, the looking around the chamber, you notice that there is a key hook in the room that is that has no keys on it. Like there's a rung of key hooks as if someone leaves a loop of keys here. Hmm. Um, I, I call back across. Can we check him for keys? Any any keys on his person? I, I start to pat down his pockets. Same, same, same. Just gonna start looking in. Yeah, he has a ring of keys. Oh my! I mean, and I kind of ring it around my finger. I say, these must lead to all the doors, maybe in this place, maybe more. They, they do. Um, there, there are. It's actually a heavy keychain. There's possibly more keys on here than you like looking. There's a lot of doors here. But there's more keys here than are that would be necessary for an estate of this size, mm-hmm. uh, and several of the keys are of very different construction to the others. Many of them uh, are longer, more ancient looking, and they bear a crest upon them. Uh, I want to hold them in front of his face and say, "Did these lead to something important to your master?" And I kind of like. He- Dang, he hisses. Confirmation. Uh, and I want to look at this crest. Do I recognize it at all? I, uh, yeah. Give me a history or just an intelligence check. Uh, Thirteen. Looking at them over, one of the keys. It's a bit of a battered key but it has the sigil of House Von Kessel on it. I hold it up to Rath and I say, Von Kessel. Why would he have those keys? He must have some connection if he is truly serving this creature. Maybe there are other other places it unlocks that he mm. lets this thing feed. Are any of you trained in history? I am. Uh, give me a uh, give me a history check, Wilhelm. Uh, should I like come back to the room and I'm checking the keys with? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, sh- yeah. and I show it to you. Oh, oh my! Uh, oh, there goes my dice. All right, history check. Uh, that's going to be a twenty-three. So, Wilhelm, looking at this key, um, this is a servant's key. This is the type of key that uh, would have been given to uh, someone who would have been serving as a housekeeper for an estate. Uh, for for so the other the like the it's consistent with the at rest of the keys. All of these keys are the type that you would expect a housekeeper or a steward or a butler to have. And this is definitely a key that would have been um, to, but, and the the other keys on this have no markings on them, but this one has a marking for House Von Kessel upon it. Hmm. Well. 
I can deduce that if this is a key of House Von Kessel, that perhaps this key opens something either in the castle or perhaps the Von Kessel, one one of their many uh, properties. With your history check, this would be the type of key that a housekeeper would use to like access the servant's entrance. We might have just uh, won ourselves a key to the back door of whatever secret hideout this uh, vampire is using. Well, I mean, didn't the Von Kessels used to live around here or something? Uh, yes, Kessel home was home to the Von Kessels. That's how it got its name. Uh, they they all lived here long, long time ago. I mean. Do we know which house is is the uh, and who is it? Not a not the. I'm thinking about the Duchess, but she's not the Duchess. She's uh, the Countess. The Countess. That's it. Uh, didn't someone say the Countess is potentially living in their uh, old place or something? Uh, yeah. If you're looking for the Von Kessel place, and I kind of open the window and point out to the castle, and I'm like, that that would be it. Probably the there's biggest a, place there- around here. There's a crash of lightning and the castle is illuminated in the silhouette of the night sky. <laughs> that's that's the one. Seems like an inviting sort of place. So, Raph, um, you were the closest to the door. Did you hear the voice of this creature? Male or female? Or indistinguishable? This creature that entered the, the house, you may have also heard it in your mind. Yeah, it was a, what was, okay, yeah, actually I did hear the voice in my mind, but it sounded so soothing and calming. Uh, but mm-hmm. was it clearly a masculine voice or? No, it was definitely not masculine. It was definitely feminine. Ah. The, and the butler invited it in. As openly. is, uh, I mean, as the thrall, you would, and that's, I think that's one of the rules of, I don't know, v- vampires have so many rules, it's really illogical. They, that's they, really annoying really, when I, someone has a bunch of rules that they right? follow. Right? The it doesn't really help anybody move forward if you're just stuck on ru- <laughs> rules. Um, wait rules, a second, rules. Rules. Wait, well, I, mm, these are- I mean, there are some rules that help, but there are some rules that hinder. We will use its rules against it. <laughs> I, as I, as we have seen before, I seem to have put myself in a corner here. Um, noted. There is a chance if we can gain access and find out where this key leads, I may don the disguise of the butler. It may give us a chance to see where this creature is. Is there an opportunity here for our classic, the classic Dusk Warden trio adventure? Because when we last left the vampire, they fled with the three of us fighting the butler. If one of us is captured and the butler brings it to the master. (laughs) Hmm? Hmm? No, it has how many? Out of, what's our ratio with that plan? How I still think it's work? positive. I think it's actually a positive <laughs> score. Uh, Me, so I think I'm in. really, really depend. Am I the one Rudy, being dragged? Uh, we need you. You have the most bite marks, so you've been uh, promoted to. I mean, but it had uh, Wilhelm's mind before. That's much more agreeable and believable. That's it. I will be the butler. Wilhelm will be under under uh, control and we will carry Rudy <laughs> and we will have Rudy as a prisoner. Now there is a- oh, Wait, I'm still a prisoner? I thought you were gonna carry him as a prisoner. I actually rather enjoyed being in the bag of holding, so I'm always willing to ride along in that. All right, I'll Better be the prisoner. Be I things. mean, if that's now, the, my role in each of these scenarios, then so be it. Now there is, there is something to that we should talk about, and that is the uh, uh, the fact that the creature did 
with great difficulty take control of my mind. There was a, a, an epic struggle between the two of us. Our wits yes. Yes. were in were in battle with one another constantly, but it did get the better of me eventually. So I think we need to be aware that it can control minds, and if it thinks it's on to something, somebody with weaker intellect. I'm not going to name names, but may be <laughs> subject to falling into the trap and and actually, Rudy, don't worry, I'm not talking about. I was going to say, um, you're talking about me. No, I'm very much aware of your intellect, um, okay. but could control their mind. We just need to be aware of that problem. I sacrificed my cat for you. Bruce gave his life willingly while you sat on a couch and watched. I have I have stolen back Rudy's mind from powers beyond the depths. Do not question my intelligence and my my Rather, words I, against mind control. I am the one in control. I told you to conjure ores months ago and you couldn't even do it. So what good are you at casting spells if you can't even conjure ores for a boat? That's a really specific spell. And, oh, there have and been I like didn't read that one times. spell. I have created madness boys. out of nothing. Boys, boys, boys. We're just tearing a riff in between our, our, our party here. Let's not argue about what possible <laughs> magic Wrath can or cannot do. Okay, it's a magic cat, you can bring it back. <laughs> it will come back in like two I can minutes. conjure a cat from another dimension, but I can't conjure Yeah, so what does it matter if it can? You can hire a, a woodworker to make your it work. Your cat work. didn't that's, even, that's six, your cat couldn't even boys, watch a boys, butler. Boys, boys, boys. It's worse than my sons when they were fattening over a piece of duck at the duck party, okay? This is way bigger than ducks. <laughs> I mean, Look, Rudy's right. I'm I'm sorry. It's just that I do not like when a creature bites me and and scrapes me and and things get away. I'm, I mean, I was the one that was bitten. I lost my cool. I'm sorry. Uh, my brain has been through a lot today, and and Wrath doesn't understand the mental battle that just occurred. Uh, he just saw me sitting on a couch. He did not realize the 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 mental acrobatics I was performing. Of course. Uh, Somersaults in your mind, right? Somersaults. Right, right. And I, I lost my cool. It's one of my rules. Don't lose your cool. Wrath, I apologize. You are excellent. You are wonderful. You have done a lot for this party. It's been a... It's, it's, I, we haven't slept. We haven't slept. It's true. It's, we been, did a, have it's a, a bit a long, long night. night. I accept your apology, and I'm sure you fought your hardest against the mist creature. Well, right. yes. I am now sorry. that we've made up, shall we? Uh, shall we get on with our plan of using me as a hostage as usual? This, I do have my concerns. Um, the this this creature, you know, you know that these creatures do not like the dawn. What would make this butler travel? If we do it, we must do it by night, not day. Then perhaps perhaps um, there's still the uh, I don't know if the lodge is connected to this or not. We have an entire day ahead of us. And we have to go to the castle at night. Now, there is an alternative option that I want to present because options are good. We are invited to the castle to meet with the Countess. That could be an invitation once we're in the castle. I mean, maybe we could get a tour. Maybe we could look for locked doors. Maybe we could try to try to get a lay of the area before we pull this plant. We have the keys. We I could don the disguise of a servant once we reach the castle and make my way through the chambers 
looking for signs of where this creature might reside. It may be under the Countess's very nose. Now, uh, the, uh, what was it? The, uh, not the commander, the, the Hood Lanterns said they were meeting before we were meeting with the Countess before this in that place. I mean, if we're sure that this vampire creature is there, are they not in danger of being taken over as well? Rudy, or should I believe- we be meeting with them to give them a heads up? At this point, I think it's safe to say that everybody in Kesselholm is in danger. There are creatures in the night that are stalking people. There, there's danger at every corner, and I have my suspicions. Again, I want to stress that we cannot trust anybody. I have a theory, but I'm afraid to say it out loud because I don't want to persuade anybody to believe something that might be false, and I don't want to jump to conclusions. So instead of throwing out wild accusations, I will say that even when we go to meet the Countess, we should pay very close attention to her. She lives in that castle. Mm -hmm. We have found a key to that castle. The vampire seemingly might live in that castle. Either the Countess is in grave danger, or the Countess could be in on it, or be the creature herself. Again, we don't have any proof at this moment, so we must treat her as innocent until we can prove that she is guilty. But we should all be on high alert and very observant for all the next steps that we take. Well, that seems... Oh, I was going to say, that seems to be a good place to take our break. And we are back from our break. We have finished our short rest. We have restocked on consumables. We're ready to roll some more dice. Um, let us dive right back in um, this time. For those of you that have a bunch of questions about Drakenheim in chat, uh, I want to just point out that we did a two-hour dedicated Q&A uh, last night uh, that is on YouTube now uh, that you can check out that ha- answers a ton of questions about Drakenheim, and we will be doing more dedicated Q&As as the Kickstarter unfolds. So for tonight, we're going to keep playing some D&D. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I do uh, have to bring the message from many of the chat of, uh, hey, Wilhelm, uh, that was not a very lucky uh, circumstance that happened uh, uh, earlier tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you forget how lucky you can be. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Come, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Thank- I, I looked at them at the beginning of the game and I was like, I have all three luck points. Remember, you have luck points. If you fail a roll, you have luck points. And you know what, guys? I really wanted to role play being, um, being charmed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it was what I wanted to do tonight. Put up a good fight, I think was your words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, that was my goal for the evening. And uh, none of you can convince me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome so as the night settles and dawn begins to break are you going to open the curtains and leave the butler to his fate they're gonna give you one last chance sir butler he howls in rage all right i hold one of the curtains you ready Rudy? Rudy? One, two, three. As the light of the morning sun in, in, in um, spills into the chamber, the creature's flesh sears and smoke rises throughout the room before he's combusted into a pile of ash and the smell of brimstone wafts into your nostrils. Uh, we should let Leah know that she'll want to use the guest bedroom for uh, until she can get a cleaner, perhaps. Mm. I open up one of the windows and like might want to air this out a bit. Leah says, Leah, um, in her her bedchamber says, I can. I'll send for the, if you can send for the sheriff. I will need to get more help for myself, but 
Strangely, I feel like a weight has already been lifted from me. Thank you. It was our pleasure. Do, do you have anywhere that you can go stay that isn't here? I'm so, supposed to be the burgomaster of this town. I'm supposed to be the one that people come to for help. Maybe I can come to them for help. I will see if I can talk to, perhaps, Natasha and Boris at the Moose and Squirrel and see if they can help me. If you're going to trust anybody, I recommend making it older friends than the butler. H how long was the butler under your, uh, under your, uh, when? how long was the butler working for you? He, since I was a young girl, he was hired by my parents. Oh, mm. well, that's more concerning. Be very careful who you trust then. Everybody, everybody's on the table. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize I'd never seen him like that before. Another question then, um, were you ever outside with the butler in, in all your years? I haven't been outside in myself in years. I can't really remember. He... I don't think that we've been outside in over a year at least. Wow. But but years ago, you would would you go outside together? I I recall. Hmm. I think so, a little sunlight might do you good, though. Maybe we can escort you over to the moose and squirrel, and maybe ask you a few questions along the way. Certainly, certainly, yes. Is there like a like a wheelchair or something yeah. around? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right make the trip more affordable. What would you like to know? Um, did the butler ever leave the house? Like, you you say you didn't, but did you ever notice the, the butler coming and going? Maybe in the evening, or coming home in the early morning, or anything Aaron's of that sort? Trip. Now that I think of it, he only left at night. Well, that checks out. He was always home during the day. He kept the curtains closed. He said the light would be harmful for my humors. He said it was the orders of, do of Dr. Moore. And this doctor that was seeing you, this is actually very important. Um, do you know the doctor? You, you're, you're the burgomaster of this town, so is the doctor somebody you're familiar with? Dr. Moore is, well, he is the Countess's counsel. Mm. Uh, resides in the castle? Yes, yes. Mm. Good, good, good to know. Any other and, questions? Well, no. that you mentioned he might be part of the academy. Potentially, he's a wizard. I I believe so, a mage of some sort, at least a very learned man to say the least. But he didn't really help so much as just tell me he gave instructions instructions for me to stay indoors, instructions for me to help with the night terrors. He gave, there were several concoctions that he left with me that were supposed to help me sleep through the night. But he said that whatever sickness I had was going to eventually take me. And did he come during the day, if you can recall, or only at night as well? I must tell you that for the past year, I've had little recollection of what has been day and what has been night. Mm. I've not left my home. Um, I have only met with visitors occasionally. <sighs> hmm. Well, but I, I don't know. Do we have any more questions for her? Does that basically I feel like she's been through a lot? 
Yes. I feel like if we can get you to safety and get you away from these night visits, that your strength will return in time. Certainly. Certainly. You arrive back at the Moose and Squirrel, um, where Natasha and Boris are shocked to see Leah. They remark, Leo, you've been in your... They, they, Natasha and Boris even remark, she looks so unwell. But they offer um, some of their stew, which L Leah hungrily eats some water and juice, and they offer their finest room to her. Um, it, well, she, she needs to stay here and they say, we, we will, we will watch over her. We will keep her safe. And they, um, Leah remarks that she would rather not tell the village folk about the butler yet. Of course, but I think there's one thing we should be cautious of and, and maybe we can get, uh, Natasha and Boris in on this is that if somebody asks to be invited in, that they don't let them. Boris, but this is a tavern. This is an inn. Of course. This is a public place. All are welcome here. Exactly. So nobody should ask to come in. They should just walk in. If somebody stops at the door, if they say, may I come in? What is this that happened? What are you speaking about? We just need to take precautions. Uh, there was... Somebody was trying to harm Leah, and their trademark was asking to be invited in. And they seem to be hesitant to enter a building without that invitation. So if you hear that, just be wary, because somebody is trying to harm Leah, and we need to protect her. Oh, yes. How did they harm Leah? Was it Dulan? It was not too long. What has happened? Boris, do you know more than you're letting on? There are old tales, old legends. I have heard a few. So have I. Is this monsters or men that has done this to Leah? Well, if, if you and I are on the same page, then we might both know that we are dealing with monsters. Mm, there have been many a monster in the Kesselwalds. Bats that drink the blood, wolves that stalk and wear the skins of men, riders in the night. It has never been a calm place for the spirits, you know. I kind of look over at Rudy. <laughs> uh, yes, we'll be on the lookout for uh, monsters. We've already encountered two. I hope we don't encounter more. Very well. We will keep Leah safe. Her family has been long friends of our family, and has she just as she has been custodian of this town, we will be custodians for her. Boris, just something to keep in mind. You ask, monsters are men. Just remember that sometime monsters can take the form of men. Mm. Very well. Very well. Before, we'll be watchful. Before I let her go, I, I turn to Leah and I kind of lean down to her and I say, Leah, we will be back to check on you. If the night terrors continue at all, you're going, you need to tell us because we're going to try to avoid that. But if it continues, that means that there are still people we can't trust. And I hope for your sake that Boris is trustworthy. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I hope so. Are you going to look around and see what you can find? We are. We where are, are here. You going to, to, where no. are you going to go next? Well, we're still uh, waiting to see when that we're supposed to have an appointment with the Countess and we're waiting on that. Uh, if it's soon, we're probably going to head up there to meet her. If it's not soon, we do have the lodge to attend to. Uh, there is the lodge out in the woods that um, 
Uh, we've talked to the druid in town. He seems to say that uh, Dulon might, there might be more information about that monster at the lodge. So, depends okay. on what we discover. Um, I will grant you all the benefits of a long rest, uh, if you wish. Um, you kind of spent half the night on watch through the rest of it, but then you can recover a little bit in the morning as well. Um, and as you finish recuperating uh, in in the inn with, with Leah and kind of tending to her wounds and, and making sure that she's okay, um, the several of the hooded lanterns uh, begin showing up at the uh, at the tavern. Boys, you think we should uh, ask them about that meeting with the countess? I I don't think they're involved with any of this stuff. I no. don't doubt that from Drakenheim they got here around the same time we did. Not not but a day before us, so. It's doubtful that they are in on any of the schemes here. They may, uh, they may be our best allies at this moment. Hmm. It's, um, they may also find themselves victim to what is going on, just like the butler did. Hmm. Now, I do not know if I am truly comprehending this creature, this fable, this myth. Although I do know that when I am up against a creature that has very strong feelings and, as you say, it rules, we can leverage that against it. What do we know about these creatures? How can we prepare ourselves to attack and kill it? Something that can turn into mist and feeds on us. Well... The easy answer to protecting ourselves is that we should not be camping outdoors. We should be resting indoors, preferably in a place where we are the only three who have access, for it cannot enter unless it is invited in. Mm. If we try to operate mostly during the daylight, then it is not of a threat to us. If we are caught outside at night, it could come hunting us. If we find clues to other people that maybe it has been attacking, we might try the same thing, but better. Um, we know that it doesn't like sunlight. We know that it, it cannot see its reflection in mirrors. Mm. Um, Monty, does, does Wilhelm know any, like, will, would he remember any more folklore than that? Um that's that's all you can put together that's, that's what you can put together yeah that's fair um beyond that it's i mean it's very old folklore there are many renditions uh and it's hard to know which ones are true and which ones are just changed throughout the years of stories being told to people who tell stories to people so that's all the concrete evidence we have we have seen sunlight burn up the butler. We have seen that the butler did not have a reflection, and we heard that the creature needed to request entry. These all ring true for what I do remember, but I would need more investigation in order to piece together what other historical evidence there is in these folklore tales. Wrath, just with your magic, you can light things up, but does that light have anything to do with daylight in terms of your magic? Um, seems to lack the potency um, mm. of natural daylight. Mm. Yes, true. Uh, and in fact, it's more than just true daylight. You need actual sunlight. Mm. Now, think, think, what else? The vulnerabilities. Does it not like getting punched in the face? Does it not like being decapitated? The Hydra, we learned quite quickly that the decapitation was not the best method of approach. Uh, what mm. are other vulnerabilities that this creature may possess? Does it not like have, having gold stabbed into it? I, 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 I have one of those moments where I'm thinking and you can like see the numbers and calculations <laughs> floating around my head. And I'm like, 
I think that if we try to decapitate it and try to punch it in the face, we will learn the answer to these questions quite quickly. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting approach. Rudy, do you have something better? <laughs> well, I'm thinking, is there anyone else in town that might know more about these stories? Do we have to go back and see Craig and, and maybe he might have some more information about... Well, since we're here, actually, uh, Boris. I, I beckoned Boris over. Yes, what? What? I'm starting to fill up with more of these 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 soldiers. What do you need now? Uh, you seem very educated on the folklore of this region. Mm. Um, these blood-drinking vampires that you mentioned. Vampire, <laughs> yes. How does one kill a vampire? It was many, many generations ago that they said the noble folk of the land drank the blood of the common folk to sustain themselves, drained them dry. Things don't seem too different these days, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it is said that even when the folk killed them, they would just disintegrate into a mist and return the next night. You must find where they are buried, their final resting place. There, they are vulnerable. There, you may drag them out into the light of the sun, for it is only through the light they may be finally destroyed. So we have to find them when they're sleeping in their final resting place and drag them into the sunlight. That sounds like berries to me. Then this creature was once a person? Yes. Yes, the vampires are humans. Formerly, they drank of the blood, the cursed blood, and for that, they are the court of the night. If we may find the true identity of this creature, this person, what it was before, we may find its resting place and kill mm. it. Then hypothetically, is... does Boris know? Does Boris? Are we letting it, Boris know about our? Well, no. We're just uh, you know, it's good. To, it's it, good to it, know how to kill monsters. You know. I also have a whole different thing on lock. Mess. It was questions. whispered, it was whispered that in the old days, the old house that ruled West, the, before Westemar was Westemar, the family that founded Drakenheim, the Von Drakens, they were vampires. They had mingled their blood with darkness and used that to gain power. And they ruled till the next dynasty brought them down. Are, are you telling me that this entire country is built on blood drinkers? Has anything really changed? <laughs> uh, you know, if it was, it wouldn't surprise me, though. So this could be one of the ancient, ancient rulers of Drakenheim, this Von Draken, this some, some old king, some old heir that continues to live and thrive and maybe in some kind of darkness or solitude. Mm. Either way, it seems imperative that we discover the identity and once we do, we can perhaps look into the final resting place of that identity. Yes. Or queen. You, we did, we did mention that it had a more feminine. Yes, it is mm. most likely a, a royalty, a queen, princess, duchess, countess. Possible. We'll see. Um, as you discuss, I assume in your private quarters at the, at the, at the inn, um, 
there uh natasha comes up uh and says the soldiers the hooded lanterns are asking for our guests hmm. they said that they would be able to get them to see the countess now does then i guess um that's our next destination this is our invitation say we go pay her a visit learn what we can mm. Mm. as you come down to the uh, the main room of the tavern Petra and Ansem are there standing at attention and they say rather stoically hello friends we we spoke with the the we were uh, made arrangements to our it seems that the Lord Commander is going to be staying for another couple days, but the the Countess has uh, made arrangements that she could meet with you, if you'd like. Petra Ansem, uh, this may seem like an odd question, but uh, any night terrors since you arrived? No, no. It's been quite charming, actually. The, the Countess is a lovely hostess, and... We uh, and she's outfitted the Lord Commander with fantastic accommodations. We have to stay down here, of course, but she's invited us all to dinner this evening. It's looking quite quite nice. Apparently, you're allowed to come if you want to. To dinner with with everybody. E yes, I, I believe we'll be taking dinner with the Lord Commander, the Countess, and 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 you've been invited, if you'd like, at the at, to, at the Great Hall of the Castle this evening. Hmm. That sounds like our chance to find out more about what's happening. Mm. I think that's things. mighty polite, and I don't see why we wouldn't go. Yes, I suppose I don't see why we wouldn't go. Um, last question, Petra Ansem. Did the Lord Commander, or Lieutenant Commander, sorry, Yes, um, Lieutenant Commander. Yeah. Uh, did the Lieutenant Commander uh, complain of any of any night terrors? Of, uh, did anybody wake up with wounds that weren't there the the previous day? No, not 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 at all. I to 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 be honest, I I would say he's getting along swimmingly well with the Countess. It's uh, almost like he's smitten by her. Wonderful, wonderful, what great. Um, I mean. I will say that, uh, sorry for the weird questions, uh, there has been um, some nightly attacks here in town, and we're just, uh, we're concerned. Mm. Oh, we, we, we've heard all about that. We've had some of our, our soldiers out uh, on patrol around to see what they can find, but we haven't heard, turned up anything so far. If you hear anything, we would love to know, says Petra. Indeed. Well, um... I suppose, uh, I mean, it's only breakfast now. If we're to attend dinner, um, uh, are we going for for afternoon tea prior to dinner? Or are we there to uh, chat? I, I would say it's it's now the because you guys did rest up. I oh, would say how it's time now, flies! Now more cl closer to the afternoon now. Yeah. <laughs> I look outside. I'm like, oh, never mind. Sorry, the day's gotten away from me. Um, very well. This should be. Most enjoyable. Interesting line of questioning, Wilhelm. You should have just asked if they had marks on their neck. <laughs> you, you really were subtle. Uh, Very direct you. way to, are, to go are, about it, for are, sure. Are, are you okay? Are you okay to have dinner? We can be more uh, stealthy if that suits you. If you if you'd like, we're happy to escort you up to the 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 castle. But otherwise, the the invitation is for seven o'clock, just shortly after sunset. Have you met the countess yet, Petra? Yes, uh, I, I I got to meet her earlier today. She's really quite lovely. And are you coming to dinner? We've been allowed. Yes, <laughs> she smiles. And. Uh, how many of your other soldiers will be coming to dinner as well? Probably just the the lieutenant commander's detail and the rest of us. The rest of the the, the lanterns will be on on duty here. 
on the uh, right. So just a handful of you are going to be there as well. Yeah. All right. I say, you know what? Maybe we should go get ourselves all spiffied up in our room, and uh, we'll meet you down here right before we go. Certainly, we'll we'll uh, we'll head up with you then. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Boys, let's uh, head to our room and talk about what we're going to wear to dinner. Hmm. Um. Rudy, close the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I need to tell you something. I guess both of you. Oh. I I was about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I closed the door again. I mean, what do you, what do you need to tell us? Um. I have met the lieutenant commander in the past, and we did not get along. Oh, you mean like, <laughs> like you had some sort of disagreement? You got bad, bad relationship. Bad, There's a boy uh, Jeff names? at the academy. We do not get along. Similar to that, yes. Um, I I don't talk about it often. It's uh, it was before I met you, Rudy. But um, when I lived in these areas, I once met this uh, lieutenant commander and. Uh, uh, I thought he was one type of person, but he ended up being a very different person. And I, um, I don't know how dinner is going to go tonight. So I just thought I needed to tell you that before we went. Um, I apologize in advance for any abrupt behavior. Um, sometimes my emotions get the better of me and, um, I just wanted you two to know that, um, I, you're very dear friends, and I trust you both very intensely. And whatever happens at dinner tonight, um, you're both very important to me. You, you're, the, you're the best family I've had in in a, in a long time. I'm sure you you mean a lot to Rath, but you know you mean a lot to me. You're like my own son. I hope that though this will not get in the way of what we're aiming to do. I will, I will, I will do everything I can to make sure that uh, it does not. I'm sure do there's one of your to... rules in your book that you can pull out and recite in your head just to keep on the path if you need to. I, I yes, I, I, I will review my rules. I will uh, stick to them as closely as possible. Do you, do you wish to don a disguise of some sort? Would this, would this help you? maneuver through the social situation of this you know lieutenant commander he might not even remember me it was it was in passing he just um he rubbed me the wrong way hmm. well i know you do enjoy leading with your best foot forward do you wish to remain anonymous he probably won't even know my name so we should be okay. Oh. I, I, to him, I am probably anonymous enough. And we are clear to go to dinner. I just wanted to make sure that the two of you knew that, um, that it's going to be an awkward situation for me. And of course, while we're there, if you need any support, if something's, you know, rubbing you the wrong way, you just let us know if you need to take a step out and we can uh, take over. Indeed. Uh, Do you wish for me to reach into his thoughts and pry out his darkest secrets and reveal them to you? Uh, (laughs) you, That actually sounds surprisingly tempting, Wrath. Um, We'll come up with a signal. It'll be something like this. Okay. Sorry. Awesome. Wonderful. Maybe we... Maybe... The countess might be a better one to pry those thoughts out of. I don't know. <laughs> Works with our plan, but right, we're sticking how about this? to the. If yeah. I go like this, countess. If he goes like this, <laughs> you know. Good, good. That sounds agreeable. All right. Now, uh, one thing that concerns me about the hooded lanterns coming is that, uh, what if they're under some sort of mind spell? Like you were under Wilhelm. This like ex- they've already met her. 
who knows if they're being mind controlled by one of those uh, vampiric demons. This is exactly what I'm worried about. Um, it sounds like uh, the Lieutenant Commander and the Countess are getting along swimmingly. Uh, which leads me to believe that perhaps he is enthralled by her. Do you believe that this Countess is the creature? Or have, have we... I know that some of the the like, uh, evidence lines up, but this is quite the accusation. Again, we won't act on that until we have proof, but things seem to be trending in that direction. Be aware of the evidence, be aware of what we know, and be observant of what other clues we can find. You were right about the butler. Do you trust her? The Countess? Yes. It's been a very long time since... Um, if I have at all met met her, I, I'm aware of the Klein Castles. I, I've heard the name before. It's we'll we'll see when we get there. You just you just do the mime. I will. Okay, so what's your plan, y'all? Do do you want to get? Uh, We're gonna get there get... early. Right, we're gonna arrive fashionably early, six forty-five. Okay, so you want to arrive a little early. Um, are you going to travel there with Petra and Ansem? Uh, sure. Okay. Anybody else have issues with that? Or I feel like we got everything we needed to out of the way, unless there was... May I May I take the keys, mm. uh, Rudy? Of course. And I hand them over. Okay. Um, and is there anything else that you guys would like to do? Like, do you want to get yourself some nice clothes? Um, uh, do Like, what do you want to do in that regard? I, I want to keep my armor and stuff on because I don't know what I'm going to run into, but like I polish the sword, I like take the armor off and I'm like, I, I wipe it all down. I make sure that I look shiny and new. So I do spend some time just cleaning it all up. Maybe I like, I change my shirt. I maybe put on, I have extra cloaks. They're all the same color, but I put on a new cloak that hasn't been traveling for months. Sure. Sure. Uh, so I look relatively the same, just way shinier and nicer. <laughs> okay, that sounds good to me. Uh, and so with the with the group of you, um, would you? Um, and you're going to travel there with Petra and Ansem as you head to, to head to dinner. Uh, I think yes. so. Yeah. And like, okay. I'm watching you get ready the whole time. I'm just sitting there in my like dirty cloak. And then just as we're about to leave, I like press to digitate, <laughs> and it looks oh. beautiful again. <laughs> I say, uh, you did a, a, a fabulous job getting ready. Uh, I probably could have saved a lot of time if you had just said something, Rudy. I forget sometimes that you can just clean things by snapping your fingers. Um, <laughs> Listen, as one of my adopted kids, as I consider you, you know, I like to let you figure out your own way of things. Why let it, you know, let me do it the easy way for you when you can learn such valuable skills as polish and armor. It is a skill that should be known. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And I, I'm applying wax to my mustache as I say this. Um, Rudy, can you make some oars? Just just wondering, just can you make oars? <laughs> oars? No. Okay, Why yeah, would I need just... to make oars? And then I walk out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As if I proved some point. <laughs> I thought we apologized. <laughs> you you meet up with Petra and Ansem uh, later in the evening, and and it, because you're t intending to ri arrive at the castle um, by seven, uh, or a little bit early, you'll need to leave about five o'clock to make it. Because it's about a, a, an hour's journey back to from the village to the the castle. It looms up on a crag lo overlooking the lake, so you you journey up there on foot along. Um, what it sometimes is a cobblestone road and across a few bridges through the through the forest and and so it overlooks a stream overlooking the the river there's kind of sorry the castle itself is on, upon a crag that overlooks the lake with a tributary river that goes into the lake so the the river that the castle is in front of is not the dran river it's more of like a smaller smaller stream that cuts through the rock uh to to go there so what i'll just show you now uh is the the layout of the the castle itself so you can get a sense of of what uh the lay of the land is oh i totally put you on the wrong map there sorry disregard that one not looking oh and i brought uh, back bruce um 
Yeah, I, I assumed as much. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, oh, that is a forest. <laughs> so this is the castle of Castleholm. Okay, it is a tall. Uh, almost square tower with rounded parapets coming out on the on the four four sides of it. So that is the central building there of the of the the castle, um, and there there's several floors to it. Abutting the castle are two towers, um, one to the east and the other to the west. And then the west tower forms a courtyard outside that connects to the main castle. So this here is a wall, but this here is actually a soaring bridge um, that goes from uh, the towers on the second floor across to that tower, to this other tower down here. The castle itself is accessed through a long bridge that overlooks the river. Uh, and then there is a gatehouse out the front as, as well down here. Um, so the the whole construction of the place is, is it's compact, but it, it, there's, and again, there's another bridge over here that connects these two towers together. So again, it's not a that's not a wall there, like a, a castle wall. It's actually a bridge that is covered up that that stretches between them. Mm -hmm. So the the whole castle towers down, and it has slate shingled rooftops and well outfitted battlements decorated with with gargoyles and hanging the and hanging uh, from the battlements uh, are the banners bearing the sigil of House Kleinkessel, um, which uh, the the House Kleinkessel has a similar sigil to House uh, uh, House Von Kessel um, in that the Von Kessels, their sigil is a castle flanked by two dragons rampant, but the Klein Kessels just don't have the dragon. <laughs> they don't have the dragons on, on their uh, on, on their sigil. So um, so that is the the lay of the the land of the castle there. Not far from the gatehouse, there is a um, there is a stable and a yard um, where there's kind of some servant outbuildings that, that are built. And as you approach up with uh, with Petra and Ansem, you can actually see there is a rather striking coach that is just poking out of the stables. Um, I... I... I don't want to leave the group, but uh, actually, I didn't even see the coach. Raph, it was you, so that's that's your call. I, yeah, I, I want to. Does it look familiar? Um, it, you just eye it from in from the stable windows. Um, and uh, give me a perception check. Uh, here we go. Twenty four. Uh, it's definitely the same coach. There's no sign of the horses, though, or the driver. A few grisly looking um, uh, housekeepers and groundskeepers, um, all, of, uh, all of them with rather um, gaunt looking features and um, almost bedraggled appearances. Um, many of them look rather advanced with age, in fact. Um, kind of saunter about attending the business of the stables and um uh before the gatehouse itself are plate armor guards whose visors are lowered i'm gonna share with these two in my mind i speak to them telepathically and let them know that that is the without a doubt i would bet my life on it that is the stagecoach we saw the night of the creature attack I, I simply nod I turn to Wrath and I just nod okay. um, as you um, the the castle itself um, the the as you approach the castle itself, uh, dusk is beginning to fall. Um, and then so like the sun is just going down as the, the clouds are starting to roll in uh, from from the even the, the storm of yes of yesterday. Um, as you. Um, 
Um, as you come up to the uh, the castle gatehouse, uh, the gates open up um, and several other hooded lantern soldiers step forward uh, along with a um, a plate armored woman um, wearing a pl- purple cloak and with a broad purple f- uh, f- plume and a sword at her at her side. Her visor is similarly closed as the, as the rest, but the the markings on her identify her perhaps as a as a captain or a castellan. And the the hooded lanterns uh, wave warmly as you approach. Um, and the um, the castellan says, "These are the the guests that you uh, in, that." The countess has inv- uh, invited to join you tonight, correct? They they say the the plate armored woman says, and Petra and Ansem nod. Yes. What are your names? She says. Um, Wolf. I am. <laughs> I am Wrath of the Academy of Mages. Very good. You. Um. My name is uh, Rudy Whitaker. Uh, that's Sheriff Rudy Whitaker. Very well. And you? Uh, Wilhelm Wolfsbane. Very good. You may cross. Know that you are under my watch here. You are guests of the Countess Constance Kleinkessel. <laughs> Enter. The Countess will be with you shortly. Chamberlain de Vries will see to your needs as you enter. And she she beckons you to cross the bridge as the doors on the other side open up and the portcullis raises. Thank you so much for your hospitality. We uh, do appreciate uh, the kindness and look forward to a lovely meal with the uh, Countess. I feel like I take, as everybody starts to walk forward, I take a few seconds before I... I kind of just look up at the castle, look at the bridge, look at the gatehouses, look at the pe- the guards with their visors down. I take the, all of that in, and then I follow. Okay. Um, so, as you... Um... Ah, darn it. Let me just fix this. Sorry, you guys. No problem. As we're crossing the bridge, I, I'm taking my time and just taking in the scenery. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. This is a... You know, again, in the mines. That was the stagecoach. I have not been able to tell if this constant teen is 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 really under her spell as well but we can potentially assume that all of these things are okay i i actually like as we're walking i, I lean over to wrath and i just kind of whisper i say visors down wrath so i'll just show you the layout of what you enter into here this is the great hall of um, uh, the Castle Home Keep. You enter through the great the great doors into a gallery great hall. the The floor is rich mahogany wood that has buffed to a, almost to a mirror sheen, and there are two great hearths that flank either side of the great hall, roaring with flame. And two long tables have been set out uh, with all sorts of placings and fixings up upon them, uh, en- enough to seat roughly a dozen people across the two tables. And then there is a throne that uh, fr- um, that above which is the skeletal form of a green dragon. Um, that reaches over the throne and another table uh, which is not marked on this map another table has been laid out in front of the throne itself that has been set with a pitcher uh, a pitcher and a wine glass and a plate and all the places have been set but there's no food here you can actually smell the food and wine coming from the kitchens below and what you can see in in this chamber here uh looking around so there's the hearths on either side several benches uh marked on on either end as well 
Um, and then there are um, the the two dining tables on either side and the throne itself. And then these sets of stairs, uh, they lead up to a gallery level because there's a gallery that that extends all the way along um, the the top here for giving kind of a look down. It's twenty about about fifteen feet above. Looking down, the ceiling itself is about thirty feet up, where there's rafters that are in kind of a triangular pattern with chandeliers hanging down uh, from from overhead, and uh, above where the throne is. Um, there is a balcony where there is a massive pipe organ and the the pipes of the organ reach up all all around and give, give a place and there is um, and as you enter into the chamber uh, there are some rather um, uh, some rather thin and pale looking uh, musicians that are playing some stringed instruments um, and that and but no one is playing the the pipe organ um there are um a few other hooded lanterns that are seated at one of the uh at one of the tables so the the table over here has uh several hooded lanterns seated at it um and there are places set for each of you at the other table um and uh places set and as you enter in there is a, a man who is he's, he's hunched over and wearing a fine black chamberlain's robe with like a fur sort of trim along the top and he clutches a, a, a set of chains around him his hair kind of scraggles down to the side as though it could never be properly combed to not be wiry um and he kind of has this sniveling almost rat-like face to 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 him and he says good evening I am the Countess's Chamberlain. You may call me DeVries. I will see to your every need this evening that all things are prepared. Tell me, do you have any allergies? Um, no. No nuts? Any of you vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free? Uh, uh, no, but if you want to add some extra garlic to everything, it just makes it taste so much better. So that would be it. Uh, mm, I'll have to check the stores. I, I believe we are out of garlic. That's a shame. It makes everything taste better. Hard to get get certain things in these parts these days. Spices, many accoutrements can be rather expensive, you understand. But we have spared a, a, a few expense. I'm afraid we only have red wine. I hope you will find that suitable. Yes. I'll take all the wine you can that give. <laughs> and I kind of punch him. Accommodating. No, no mead with all the uh, orchards and such in the area. Mm. No ciders. It seems that the the uh, the local uh, meadery, the proprietor has died mysteriously under strange circumstances. How very unfortunate, actually. It was rather sad. His wife is utterly stricken with grief. His son, a simpleton who cannot hold. It seems that it may go out of business very soon. Very unfortunate. Very sad. Tragic. I was a big fan of the mead here. Yes, please, your seats. And he said he, he gestures to um, you to take the three seats on this side, um, and Petra and Ansem will take the seats on the other side. That there's a, a, essentially a place for the, for the lieutenant commander, a, a, as well to sit at at this table. Uh, the other hooded lanterns take their seats at the at the other table, uh, seat, seated sort of are around it. Um, and he he gives uh, he reaches into his cloak and pulls out a dinner bell and um, several um, rather uh, waif like um, housekeepers uh, and uh, servers uh, stride up from the stairs, the, the spiral staircases. One goes up, one goes down, and then they also go down again. And so several people come up for one of the spiral staircases uh, to the south, uh, bringing platters of food and uh, pouring uh, wine uh, for for you all. Um, 
please in, enjoy these hors d'oeuvres. The Countess will be with us very shortly, I am sure, but she wanted to make sure that you were not left unaccounted for while you were here. Well, again, very kind, very kind. Appreciate that. I start to eat the hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> the the hors d'oeuvres that, that come that come up are um, there there are uh, kind of platters of very thinly sliced meats um, so, so so sort of a charcuterie several cheeses uh, some some uh, honeyed bacon and oddly enough some candied salmon um, <laughs> uh, and um, every, almost everything is very succulent meat like several of the the hors d'oeuvres that are brought up um have you have you, have you ever had like the the beef carpaccio like the the thinly sliced mm -hmm. very 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 bloody beef mm -hmm. that, that's that's what c comes up well, look how small these portions are how do they expect anyone to get full around here <laughs> and i put like five of them in my hand <laughs> Rudy, i believe these Sorry. are the uh the beginning the starters there will be a a larger mm. meal later of course but the starter mm. should still be you can big, have, and I'm still picking. You can have mine. Uh, I we will stick also to one. have a very fine beet soup. A I'll stick of, to the meat. <laughs> uh, it sounds delightful, but I will pass. Mm. I'll take the beet soup. The Petra Petra turns to the, the chamber, Mister uh, Mister Chamberlain. Is, where where is the lieutenant commander he says mm, he is in his chambers being uh, getting prepared he will be down very shortly um yeah i i have a message from him that uh it, it seems that he just has some business to attend to before attending tonight no offense has been taken by the countess do not worry uh chamberlain i this wine has only uh accelerated my uh, may I take me to your washing room mm, yes I will show you where where the you may relieve yourself indeed um, he directs you um, to uh, the the lower um, the uh, the basement levels of the uh, of Kesselholm, so I'll just pull that up. Does he sort of gesture me and take care of everyone else, or does he escort me? Um, he uh, he escorts you. Um, so what I'll just show you here, Wrath, as you as you come down here, this is the this is the chamber that you see here. Uh, I'll just pull up the, the area here. He brings you down the spiral stairs on this side uh, to where the kitchens are. And you can see that there are several uh, there are several servants working in the kitchens here. They're cooking up all, all the meals and attending to everything. Uh, you see that there are, um, it is a well appointed castle kitchen with a staff of about a dozen people that are all working down here um, and here uh, here are the privies and he gestures to to you that you may use them thank you and i close the door is there a door is there a door to close yep. is there some yep. privacy yep. okay there, nice uh well there's kind of privacy it's a row of toilets right so like conceivably like six people could sit here and do their business all together but he's not Pray in for conversation. Him. Yeah, yeah. Um, does he stick around? Um, he closes the door, right? But like, one of the things that you got to understand about like, you know, pre-modern times is is take it having privacy to poop was not really a thing. So, so who else uh, is in there with me? Just you, right now. It's just okay, you. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a beat. Does do I hear him walk away? I'm gonna kind of go up to the door, and uh... you you hear him breathing uh, over the sound of of uh, the 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 kitchen staff working. Okay, I'm going to 
Oh. <laughs> oh. Are you okay in there, sir? I this wine. Oh. And I'm making groaning, and it's oh, it's just I need a I need a a few minutes to catch. Oh. Uh, make a deception check. <laughs> 17. Okay, he says, very, very well, very well. See, see to yourself. The Countess will be down shortly. I must away. And so he, you, you kind of hear the sound of someone walking back up the stairs, but there's still people working in the kitchen. Uh, I, I just want to peek out the door and, uh, and sort of just don the disguise of like a common kitchen staffer. <laughs> and just start to make my way through like and try to just get, and just do a quick once over like go between the stations and just sort of do a quick once around uh okay. the kitchen as fast and, and, and as busy as i can as you come in the, the cook says to you ah estrella take this back back up on your next way way up and he hands you a platter of food um and what you can see is that there uh there's people moving in and out down here um, but what you can discern from all this is that these two rooms here are uh, the pantries, and this is likely the scullery. Uh, the scullery being the wash where like they do the washing. So you you kind of look around. E everything seems to be be in order here. Uh, as you walk around, you see one of the servants kind of sloshing a bucket of water uh, into a drain that drains out there as well, and uh, the. From what you can tell from being in the privy, there's actual plumbing in here. It's very fancy, um, but it checks out. Uh, I I, do, I finish my lap, and I'm gonna actually keep taking the tray up the stairs. But I'm gonna go back into my disguise as soon as I'm out of sight uh, from the kitchen staff before I reach the. Uh, With the, the tray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm so just gonna go up and just bring the tray upstairs. Okay. So you bring the tray back up upstairs um, and the Chamberlain sees you with the tray and says, did one of the kitchen staff ask you to do that? Uh, I became very, very hungry after my, and I just start shoveling <laughs> the food into okay. my mouth. Make another and, deception check. Uh, 13. Mmm, hungry, yes. And he sees you like shoveling the food and he just he just nods like alright. And I'm just gonna uh, place it on a random side table and just uh, and go back to my seat. Okay. S sitting back down at, at your table, he um he uh, a, a few more minutes pass. Rudy, Wilhelm, do you wanna whisper anything to each other or say anything to each other? Yes. And the Chamberlain's still around? Yeah, yeah, he's overseeing all of the serving staff. Okay. While he's, like, not quite near our table, I say, uh, Wilhelm, I seem to have gotten some uh, hors d'oeuvres on my face. May I borrow your mirror? Oh, yes, uh, certainly. And I, I pull out the mirror, and I kind of hand it to her, and I'm, like, looking in the mirror with her. Okay, Wilhelm, make a slate of hand check. Ooh. I'm going to get a 10 on that. It's a little obvious what you're doing that you as you twist the mirror around, but you do see the Chamberlain's reflection in the mirror. I imagine that as as I'm looking through the mirror and I see the Chamberlain's reflection, he actually makes eye contact with me in the mirror and I immediately let go of mm. the mirror and like Rudy takes it. Yes, but as he makes eye contact with you, he has to drop it because there is a procession uh, and a, um, a sort of a, it, there is a fanfare that emerges from the band as the countess begins stepping down the stairs. And that's where we're going to end for the night. Oh. <laughs> yeah. As always, a big thank you to our players, Kelly, Jill and Joe for playing tonight. Thank you all so much. A uh, huge thank you to Kyle for all the work that he does behind the yeah. scenes and in chat. And a special thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin, for running a wonderful horror-themed campaign this evening.
Thanks. And, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was, uh, um, and uh, obviously uh, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They've graciously given us their permission to use them in our stream games. And you can too. Uh, and go and check out and support these amazing creators for the World 20 for the virtual tabletop, the custom maps made by Monty using Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft based on cartography by Dyson Logos, player character artwork by Jeremy Cole, NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon, monster token artwork from the D&D 5e Monster Manual and other source books, spell effects tokens by Gabriel Picard, and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Way Bigger Than Ducks, Yes, 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 and of course, the Dusk Wardens. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the work that we create here on YouTube, uh, Twitch, uh, and uh, uh, podcast platforms and el elsewhere, please consider joining our community by following the links in the description below or at patreon.com slash dungeon dudes. We also have a underscore dudes. Right, the underscore. We yes. also have a phenomenal Discord community that is exclusive for our patrons. So you can join us on Discord and chat with us about all things Drakenheim, all things D and D, uh, all things to do with our Kickstarter, and uh, you can also join our monthly writers' room and monthly Q and A question submissions as well. Uh, so yeah, join us on Discord. Come chat. You know us, we do videos every Tuesday and Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything in D, but in addition to watching our great videos, which are going to continue nonstop, we have our Kickstarter running right now. Head to drakenheim.com if you want to get in on it. We have made uh, an amazing book. We're so proud of it, and we would love to see you have a copy of this for your very own so you can run it for yourself. We have been doing so well and so blown away, and we're just so grateful for the outpouring of support for this project. So thank you all so much. Check it out at drakenheim.com. And be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check them out on podcast as well. And with that, thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next week in the shadows of Drakenheim. <laughs>